Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 Now we beseech you, brethren, say people, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that's the rapture, that's when we meet in the clouds, that ye be not seen soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Don't let these things trouble you. Don't get in anxiety. Don't get. It's a good thing that the Lord is coming. Let the Lord, when He does come, let Him find you working and being faithful. You know, only those that are not doing what the Bible says would have to worry. If you're guilty, you're going to fear. If a police car pulls up in front of your house and you've done nothing wrong, it's okay, it's a police car. He's coming up to my, my driveway, he's coming up to my door. I don't know, I didn't do nothing wrong, I'm not worried. But if you're guilty and that police car pulls up, and you're going to sit there in anxiety and fear until he, you know, he walks across the street. Let no man deceive you by any means. Alright, one particular way. For that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now we're getting to tribulation period, which we have nothing to worry about. And Paul is going to speak to the church who has nothing to worry about, just a particular warning. Why? Because these guys are going out with the gospel. People will get saved so they don't go to hell and... They won't go through this period called the tribulation. It's a double work of going all the world and preach the gospel. Who would want their family and friends and, and countrymen to get involved with this man of sin? That they should not come except there come a falling away. Well, that's not good. You fall apart. You, you leave. And the man of sin. Wow. How's that? That man of sin, one particular man, be revealed. He's going to be made known. Everybody keeps saying, Obama is the Antichrist, this guy is the Antichrist, that Antichrist. When God is ready to show who the Antichrist is, guess what? It will make the news. It will make the papers. It will be who he is. Stop calling other people because you are false prophesying. And if you're a false prophet, guess what? The Bible says in the Old Testament, you're to be put to death. You're to be put to death. Well, so people to be gone by then? They'll be gone. The son of perdition. And again, that runs into uh, Judas. Who opposes and exalted. He's against all and he exalted himself above all that is called big G God. The Antichrist, when he steps into power, he will not be afraid to proclaim, I am God. Now, there are people who proclaim, oh, they're Jesus Christ. They're the Messiah. They're the prophet of God. They're the angels of God. Well, this one will call in and say, I am God. We'll see by the end of this chapter. Or that is worshipped. 
This is the one that said, Jesus, hey, I'll give you all this if you fall down and worship me. So that he, as God, big G, this man of sin, son of per per uh, perdition, sitteth in the temple of God. Now, this said, this is written 54 A.D. That temple will not be destroyed to 70 A.D. Now, can you imagine a lot of people in 71 A.D.? Oh, man, the Bible's wrong. Because the temple's been destroyed and no one has come to sit in that temple. So the Bible's wrong, let's throw it out. No, there must be a temple coming. There hasn't been a temple in Jerusalem since 70 A.D. So guess what? The process of elimination of God, who he is as a prophet in scripture, there is a temple coming. And it will have the holy of holy, the holy place. And he's going to sit in the temple. Where is the only place that you can read in scriptures where he's going to sit? The mercy seat. Showing himself. That he is God, and where is the only place he can do that? The mercy seat. One day that priest is going to come in there, the day of atonement, he's going to pull back that veil. He's going to hi. Now, I won't take that blood. I'll take your blood. Now, there's a group of people who are very interested in drinking Jewish blood. And they don't even know it. By saying, hocus pocus, fee, fly, fo, fum, this is the blood of Jesus Christ, a Jew. And then they go forth to eat and drink that body that they say is of a Jew. It ain't Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. You ain't cutting uh, chunks of flesh off him, and you ain't siphoning his blood out of him. So it's got to be somebody else. And realize that day of atonement, when that priest goes in there, he goes in there twice. One for his sins. And one for the sins of the people. And he ain't coming out for the people. He's going to pull that veil back and voila. And that will be a revelation to the whole world. There's God sitting there. No one has ever, 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 ever dared to sit in that seat. Ever. Here he is. And it says that he is big G-O-D. Hmm. Second Corinthians 4 4 says he's a god of this world, small g. He becomes big G. Aren't you glad we're gone? Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Paul's like, get your memory cap on. Now ye know. What withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Not when you say it's going to happen. Don't you give days. Don't you give years. And notice it said his time. That could be Satan's time or God's time. I got it marked as Satan's time. Because he has a time. When he's kicked out of heaven in Revelation 12. It says that he knoweth his time is short. For the mystery, here's another mystery, of iniquity does already work. Already work. Even as this is written. In AD 54, it's already begun. So you're going to tell me that you know the date and time. And look how many years this, this thing's been going. As the line of Jesus Christ came. So is that line of the Antichrist is coming. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Rapture. It's not the past, it's not the present tense, it's the past tense. And that's all I can say about verse 7. I can't say much. I, I don't understand it. But until he be taken out of the way, probably the church. I assume. We're not going to go through all this. Some people preach it. The church will go through this. Impossible. Then. And then. When who, he be taken out of the way. Whoever the he is is taken out of the way. Then shall that 
capital W wicked be revealed. So if that is the church, when we're gone, then it's going to be revealed who he is. If that's the case, a Christian, you're not going to know who it is. You won't be here for it. Be revealed whom the wicked, that wicked, the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the fire, the word. Remember how Jesus conquered Satan on the mountain of on the mountain of uh, on the mountain and on the temple he conquered Satan with the Word of God they quoted the scripture and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming that's the second advent so we've got the rapture we got the tribulation and we got the second advent the Revelation says that the set, all the last seven plagues, the trumpets, the seals, the vials, ends when there's no sun, no moon, there's no light. And then here comes a light from outer space. It's not E.T. coming, it's Jesus Christ. And boy, is he mad. Even him, Satan, whose coming is after the working of Satan, so that's not even him, because Jesus Christ is not coming with the working of Satan. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, there's your Pentecostals. They're going to love Satan. They're going to hoot and holler and all that because Satan will be now the head of their church. See the signs? Signs are tribulation. They're not church age. So Satan has a church fooled. He's got you thinking you're in the tribulation period or the Old Testament. As we saw with Galatians, remember how the church was put back under the law. Lying wonders. John 8, 44. Power. That's a false power. Charismatic power. And with all deceivableness. How, does that sound like Jesus Christ and God? No. Of unrighteousness. All right. Now you know who this character is. There's no shabba doubt. In them, the lost man. John 3.16. There is no more John 3.16. In them that perish. John 3.16 tells us who what happens when a man does not believe on the Son of God. Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Now, when were they heard that? When the church was present and preaching. So, there is the gospel message going out before the rapture. Very far and few today. But it's going out. They're told what to do before the rapture happens, before the Great Tribulation period. Now, because they forbade John 3.16. John says, he that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And for this cause God shall send them, the lost people, Strong delusion. All right. Let's go back to chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tribulation and or hell. Now it's hell for the people here in AD 54 because the rapture has not happened. The tribulation period has not happened. But do you realize when you preach the gospel, whatever ministry God has given you to me has been the street ministry of the farmer's market. If the rapture would happen, if we were there preaching at the ministry of the, of the farmer's market in Daytona Beach, if, that, if the rapture happened that moment, do you realize they're without excuse and God will send vengeance on them? Because my family know they're not speaking nice of us, my jury of them. Oh, you don't like it? You think he's an idiot? You think he's stupid? 
Watch this. Come up hither. Oh, he's gone. Yay. Wow. Did you just hear the news on CNN? What they just found in Jerusalem? Now you're going to speak about the temple. Is the temple going to be there? I'm going to tell you exactly what I know. I have no idea. It may be there before we go. It may be built while the tribulation. It may take three and a half years because that three and a half year period, that's when the great tribulation begins. That's when he shows himself according to Revelation. That temple may be, may be there. It may not be there. I don't care. I'm going before it. I mean the tribulation. If the temple's built while I'm alive, okay. But if not, now watch this. God of love. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they who have rejected the gospel should believe a lie. Now, who's that liar? Verse 9. When we're gone and Satan sets up his kingdom here, his throne, God's going to say, okay, fine. There's your leader. There's your God. Follow him. Worship him. Love him. Obey him. Now, ready? We're not done. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. So, if we beat the mark and we beat the computer, we're, we're going to be absolutely not. And Jesus says in Matthew 7, the only Gentiles who will be saved is your attitude to that Jew. And they don't even know they're doing it. Lord, what do you mean I took care of you? What do you mean I visited you? You visited my own, so I'm going to reward you. Wow, okay. They have no idea they're doing it. But the tribulation period, as far as the Gentile, oh, who believe not the truth. What is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here's the truth. The church way is gone, been raptured, and the life. Well, he said those that perish. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right. Now let's go back to last night and read chapter 1, verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure. So there are two pleasures. There is a godly pleasure and there is an unrighteous pleasure. And a lot of Christians today are involved in unrighteous pleasure. And they're going to lose rewards. But as far as a lost man, he gets damnation. Have you read what, what the end of Romans chapter 1 says? Not only do they, something, they know it's a sin, but they enjoy it, something like that. Remember what Moses in, in uh, Hebrews 11 said? He, he refused to enjoy the pleasure of sin. You know, sin, the Bible says sin is pleasurable. Until you have to pay for it. If you want to pay for it and not have Jesus pay for it, it's no longer pleasurable. But I'll tell you one thing, our sin was not pleasurable for Jesus. And yet he was obedient, Hebrews says. So next time with the Lord's Supper in your church, you realize that it was not pleasurable for him. For our sin and our pleasure. The pleasure in unrighteousness. This is just a mark gives you. It says here. But. Some, some buts are great in the Bible. We are bound to give thanks always to God. Because we're going to go through the tribulation? Absolutely not. I want to thank, I want to thank us all for going through and putting up with this guy. No, 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 no. But we are bound to give thanks always to God. For you, brethren... Beloved of the Lord, because God from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification, the setting part of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and belief of the truth. We're not going through this because we're sanctified. We've been called. We are chosen. We are taken out away from the unbelievers. Wherefore, excuse me, whereunto... He, God, called you by our gospel. You heard the gospel. It was preached to you. 
You received it. What happens to those that don't receive it? They get the Antichrist. What happens to those that do, do receive the gospel? You get Jesus Christ. You realize, according to the gospel, you can get Jesus Christ or you can get Antichrist. Either or Christ. Which one do you want? To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the gospel does. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions which we have been taught. Now, there are traditions for the Christian. And they're written in the Bible and you better understand what they are and what they're not. You can't say we're completely faultless of all traditions. As Paul just said, there's some that have taught you guys. Which ye have been taught, whether by word. All right, ready, ready. Where can I find the tradition or our epistle, First Thessalonians? Remember that long list of things that were in the last chapter. That was a tradition: praying, rejoicing, trying all things, abstaining from all appearance of evil. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God. Even our Father, which has loved us, John 3, 16, and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. How can you find hope in the tribulation period where everyone's going to believe a lie and everyone's going to be damned? That ain't the hope. The blessed hope, Titus 2, 13, Jesus Christ calling us out of that mess. Comfort your hearts. We saw that in the end of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. About the rapture. So that matches the rapture. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, a good word, and work. So that which is good, you establish yourself in it and do it and apply it. And be in it. When the Lord comes, may he find you faithful and right that you can attain a reward. And if you're, you're suffering, as he's spoken about in the last chapter, let's bypass the seven years. Let's get to the second advent in Jesus Christ. And when he comes, you'll get the reign in the millennial reign of no cursed earth. How's that? 